Hello everybody. In today's lesson we are going to see how can we insert and read data from the database. Data that we will receive from the database will be in JSON format. Also in this tutorial I will not use any kind of security checks because I want to show only the basics for the implementation and besides that the video would be much longer. So let's see what we have to do. First we are going to create a database, then we are going to create PHP files that will allow us to manipulate with the database, then we are going to test our database and after that create Android application. I will be using my local MySQL database. Okay, so let's go to the PHP my admin and create a new database so new and let's type tutorial for the name create okay now we we'll create a new table called student with the four columns ID first name last name and age so column one ID integer length is 10 then set it as primary key Okay, and make it auto increment. Then first name, varchar, 30 or whatever you like. Same for the last name and age, you can varchar or integer, whatever you want. Save. Okay, the table has been saved. Now we are going to create some PHP files. So here I will first create uh, a file called connection.php that we will use to connect to the database. So first we are going to define our host name and it will be localhost. Then for our user it will be root, so it is a default user for the XAMPP server. Then for the password I will leave it blank because I didn't type any password for my root user and we will define a database name variable that has a value of tutorial because it is a name of the database that we have just created and we are going to include a connection to our database so connect equals mysql connect and type our defined parameters so hostname user password and database name a port and socket you can just delete next we will create a new php file insert student that will allow us to insert a new data into the database so let me just make this clear we will be using a post method so every time we want to do something we will check if our received method is post so if it is then we will require our connection that we have previously created and we will call a function create student So create a new function and make sure that you mention our connection and you need to use a keyword global because we are referring to the variable that is placed outside this function create student. Then we are going to load three parameters from our post method that contains first name, last name and age. So you just create three variables by using a post method like this and create a new query that will insert these parameters into the database. So query equals insert into student first name, last name, age, values our just created values first name, last name and age 
and execute this query by typing mysql underscore query our connects comma with our query and simply after that just close this connection mysql close connects okay so that would be for inserting the data let's test it out so here I have a program that is called Postman that allows me to send a post request to the server. So by doing this we will easily see if it is working properly. First we are going to type our URL where the PHP file is stored. Then we are going to choose a method by selecting post. and in our body we will pass parameters first name, last name and age I will type here my name so first name, last name and age let's type send let's now check our database refresh our student table and as you can see a table has a new data inside of it so it means that this is working properly. Now let's create one more just to have a bigger database. Okay, now let's create a new PHP file that will allow us to list these students. We will name this file showstudents.php and again First we are checking if the method is post and we are including our connection. Then we will call the function called showStudent, create this function, type there global connect and now we are going to insert a query for selecting all students from the table. So query equals select all from student. We will execute this query and with its execution we will get the number of rows in the table. Create a new array that will hold our information. Here we just check if there are rows in the table. So while there are rows in the table fill the array with the selected row. Then because we are returning a JSON we will add a content type specifying that it is a JSON format and then we will just echo our array so type echo JSON encode array with the name of students that is referencing our temporarily array and just as always close the connection now for some testing let's access our showstudents.php file on the server using the post method as you can see we are getting a json response that is exactly what we need. So in this first tutorial we saw how to create a database, how to set it up and create PHP files. In part 2 of this video we will create an Android application that is going to use these PHP files. So see you soon. Goodbye.